And in this presentation, I'm going to be giving an overview of the MetaMedian package. This is an R package that can be used to meta-analyze studies that report the median of the outcome. I'm going to begin with going over the context of uh, where this package can be used. Um, so I'm going to consider the setting where we have an aggregate data meta-analysis that has a continuous outcome, say the age. Um, and in this type of setting, I'm going to consider that some or perhaps even all of the primary studies report the sample median of the outcome. Uh, one case where this very commonly occurs is when data are skewed, so authors may choose to report the median. Um, but this happens in all sorts of all sorts of settings. There's a few statistical challenges that uh, one faces when meta-analyzing this type of data. Um, standard statistical methods for performing meta-analysis of continuous data often assume that the primary studies report the sample mean and the standard deviation of the outcome. And where, the, where medians become a bit problematic is that studies rarely report the standard error of the median. And these, sort of, these standard errors are needed to compute the weights in an inverse variance weighted meta-analysis. Another challenge is that <clears throat> some studies may report the mean and other studies may report the median. And now we have the case where different studies are reporting different outcome measures, and we may need, we need a single outcome measure for standard methods. Um, so these challenges have uh, resulted in lots of statistical, lots of developments in the statistical literature over the last few decades. One group of methods we're going to refer to as mean-based methods, and um, we're, I'm later going to talk about median-based methods. But for these mean-based methods, the the approach can be described as follows. We first impute the sample means and estimates of their standard errors from all studies that report the median. Then uh, we're going to apply standard methods uh, based on either the sample means or the imputed sample means. Um, and so this is going to be estimating a pooled mean or perhaps a pooled difference of means for two group studies. For performing this first step of imputing the sample means and their standard errors, um, there's been a, a huge amount of uh, estimators that have been proposed in recent years, and particularly over the last five years or so. There's been um, well over, I think, a dozen papers. Um, and they typically consider um, that studies report the median of the outcome and possibly the, either the minimum and maximum values or the first and third quartiles of the outcome, or perhaps both. And so these are denoted by scenarios S1, S2, and S3. In all three of these scenarios, they're assuming we have the sample size as well, which we're denoting by N. So the, the advantage of these mean-based methods are that they're applicable in very general meta-analytic settings. There has been proposed uh, a few median-based methods these are a bit more case specific, um, but in any case, we can describe them as follows. Um, all of these have been proposed fairly recently. So the, the median of the diff the median of medians method, uh, or for two group data, it's going to be the median of the difference of medians method. This is an approach that completely avoids having to estimate the standard error of the medians. Um, there's been a few approaches that try to estimate the standard error of the medians and then apply standard meta-analytic inverse variance weighted methods. And so this um, quantile matching estimation, which we're denoting by QE, this approach uses a parametric estimator. Uh, there was a, a paper that followed um, shortly after, uh, which um, uses a non-parametric estimator of the standard errors. But the, the idea is quite similar. Um, the meta-median package implements both these mean-based methods and these median-based methods. The mean-based methods are implemented in the meta-mean function. The median-based methods are implemented in the meta-median function. There's a few example data sets to uh, play around with when getting familiar with the methods. Um, these three data sets are from a recently performed meta-analysis that aimed to identify risk factors for a severe course of COVID-19. They contain data on different variables, and they're comparing COVID-19 survivors and non-survivors. So the dat.age data set 
has data on the age of these COVID-19 patients, um, which I'm gonna be focusing on this data set uh, throughout this presentation. And one other thing to note about the structure of the package is that a number of these approaches eventually use inverse variance type weighting to perform meta-analysis. And so internally in our package, we're gonna apply the metaphor package to perform the pooling step. And uh, note that the object that's returned by many of the functions in the meta-median package, they return the object that's returned by the metaphor package. So this enables um, data analysts to use uh, a lot of the functionalities that are available in the metaphor package that many may be familiar with, such as generating forest plots and funnel plots and testing small study effects and all these types of subsequent analyses that um, users may want to perform uh, who are familiar with the metaphor package. Okay, so the, the, the main functions in the metamedian package require users to supply a data set. And so in this data set, the rows are going to correspond to the primary studies, and the columns are going to correspond to the summary statistics. So for instance, in the example data set, I show the first three rows for the first seven columns. So they contain the, the, the um, optionally, they contain the author name of the primary study, and the different columns here contain the sample size, the median, and all sorts of other summary statistics for uh, the first group. This is the group of uh, non-survivors. There are additional columns for the group of survivors, which is denoted by G2 for group two. The uh, meta mean function has a few main arguments. So it has the input data set, of course. And then the next argument, which is denoted by here mean method. This is the method that's going to be used to impute the means from medians. And the next argument, SE method, this is going to be the method for estimating the standard error of these imputed means. The, uh, there's a couple different options. The naive option, this uses the imputed standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. This is um, an approach that has traditionally been used in the literature uh, very recently. I've explored uh, with a few colleagues um, a, parametric bootstrap of a parametric bootstrap approach. The idea being that this may help better incorporate the variability of these imputed means. Um, and we've explored that in a very recent paper. Now for the outcome measure that's going to be used in the meta-analysis, this depends on how the input data set is structured. So when the input data set consists of just one group studies, it's going to meta-analyze the mean of the outcome. When the input data set consists of two group studies, such as in our example, it's going to meta-analyze the difference of means across the two groups. So at the bottom of the slide here, we have an example where I'm applying the meta-mean function supplying the input data set, specifying one of these mean-based methods, um, and then I'm using the bootstrap uh, standard error estimator for the within-study standard errors. The output uh, is uh, perhaps very familiar for those who use the metaphor package. This is the object that's returned by the RMA function in the metaphor package, and this is indicating a, a pooled estimate of a 12.8. So this corresponds to the difference of means so this, uh, between survivors and non-survivors. So this is indicating that the non-survivors are 12.8, the average age is 12.8 years larger in the non-survivor group. The meta-mean function is, uh, the user interface is, is quite similar. We have an input data set. We have the different uh, median-based methods are specified by the median method argument. And once again, the structure of the input data set is going to determine what type of outco outcome measure that's going to be um, used in the meta-analysis. So um, at the bottom of the slide here, we have an example of using the meta-median function where I'm supplying um, the same input data set, um, the age data set, and I'm applying one of the QE median-based method. And here the output is, uh, the structure of the output is the same. And here we're getting a pooled estimate of 13.2 of years. So this is the difference of medians now instead of the difference of means. Um, so this is saying that the median age uh, is um, 
13.2 years larger in the non-survivor group compared to the survivor group. All right, so uh, in summary, the meta-median package uh, allows data analysts to apply several of these mean-based methods as well as uh, these median-based methods to perform meta-analysis in this setting. And our hope is that this package will help facilitate data analysts um, applying several of these different methods and perhaps evaluating how their conclusions may change depending on the choice of method. Um, and then a, uh, one reminder is that this is um, integrated in the, in the metaphor workflow, so it enables you to um, use these um, functions you may be familiar with in the metaphor package, such as generating force plots, um, very easily after using the metamedian package to um, obtain a fitted model here. Um, to access the uh, package, the released version is available on CRAN, the development version is available on GitHub, and uh, we just released today a, a preprint uh, describing uh, the metamedian package. It's available in archive here on the uh, bottom of the slide here. So, uh, thank you very much.